In this video, I'm going to explain why it's ok to connect more solar panels to your charge controller than it's actually rated for, and what you need to watch out for when you do it. Where I live in Belgium, we pay tax based on the power rating of your grid tie inverter. The bigger the inverter, the more tax you pay. So what do people do? They install a 5 kW inverter and instead of adding 5 kW of solar panels, they connect 7 kW to it. That's called overpaneling. Overpaneling is mostly done in grid tie systems for this reason. But you can also do it in off-grid systems with an MPPT or hybrid inverter. In this video, I'm going to discuss the limits you need to respect, a practical example and the downsides of overpaneling. But first, let me explain why you would want to overpanel in the first place. The first reason is more energy with the same size MPPT. If you overpanel, you have more solar panels per MPPT, because solar panels in practical environments often only produce around 70% of their rated power. A slightly oversized array gives you a larger energy yield over the day, especially in winter and on cloudy days. The second reason is cheaper electronics. Panels can be cheaper per watt than electronics. It can be more affordable to buy more panels and keep a smaller MPPT or inverter, instead of upgrading to a larger, more expensive unit. And the third reason is legal and tax limits on inverter size. With grid tie systems, the tax are usually based on the inverter size, not the panel size. In Belgium, for example, you pay 100 euros per kilowatt of inverter. If you have a 5 kW string inverter, you will pay 500 euros yearly. So people install a 5 kW inverter and overpanel the DC side. The trick is to oversize the panels while staying within the device electrical limits. When you oversize, there are two things you must respect. This applies to MPPTs, hybrid inverters and grid tie string inverters. The first is the maximum PV input voltage, and the second is the maximum PV input current. If you stay inside these limits, you will not have any problems. Let's start with the voltage. We use this rule of thumb to decide how many solar panels we can string in series. That's the input voltage limit divided by the VOC of the panel times 1.25. The 1.25 safety factor accounts for cold weather, since the VOC rises as temperature drops. I will show you an example of this soon. You always round down to get the maximum number of solar panels in series. To add more power, you add more panels in parallel. And the second one is for current. We look at the maximum PV short circuit input current on the charge controller datasheet. We use the short circuit current of all parallel strings times 1.25. And that must be lower than the maximum PV input current of the MPPT or string inverter. Some people confuse the 35 amp maximum PV short circuit input with the 30 amp charge current. These are two different values, so make sure you understand the difference. Once the PV voltage and PV short circuit current are within specs, you are free to oversize the power input to the MPPT. Let's do a short example with a Victron Smart Solar 130, 100 watt solar panels and a 12 volt lithium battery. These are the solar panel specifications for the EcoVerti 100 watt panel. The first step is to check the voltage. Let's figure out how many panels we can add in series. 100 volts divided by VOC of 22.7 volts times 1.25 equals 3.52. So we can have a maximum of 3 panels in series. 
and the second step is to check the current. Each 3 panel series string has a short circuit current of 5.55 amps. With 2 strings in parallel, this becomes 11.1 amps. And with a 1.25 safety factor, we get 13.9 amps. Now we check the maximum PV input current of the charge controller. The datasheet specifies a maximum input current of 35 amps. So we are well within the limit. Now we have a 3S2P solar array totaling 600 watts. A realistic number on sunny days is about 70% of that. So that's 420 watts. The MPPT output is rated at only 30 amps. With a 12.8 volt nominal battery, that's roughly 384 watts. So the MPPT can only deliver 384 watts to the battery, even though the panels could theoretically provide more. On rainy or cloudy days, the MPPT might only put out 300 watts. In that case, the MPPT delivers everything to the battery. There is no clipping. On a cold, clear midday, when the array might hit 500 watts, the MPPT clips the output at 30 amps or 384 watts. Any extra potential from the panels is clipped and not used. You now have a 600 watt array feeding a charge controller that can output 384 watts to a 12 volt battery. That's classic and safe over paneling. Now you might ask, the input can handle up to 35 amps. Why don't you add more panels in parallel? Why branch connectors for parallel arrays, the MC4 splitters, are usually rated up to 20 amps. If you go over this, you should use a combiner box with fuses or breakers and a thicker cable because you're wiring in parallel. This adds extra cost and complexity and it might not be worth it. In some cases, buying another charge controller and only wiring the solar panels in series can be cheaper and cleaner than heavily over a single low voltage MPPT. For grid tie systems, people often use a DC to AC ratio of 1.4, meaning that a 5 kW inverter can support up to 7 kW of solar. That's precisely why in Belgium you often see a 5 kW inverter with more panels on the roof. You stay in the lower tax bracket for the inverter, but you get more yearly kilowatt hours from the battery. Instead of clipping the top during ideal solar conditions, you can charge a battery. But that's a whole other topic. Let me know in the comments if you would want me to do a video about energy storage systems while being grid tight. Overpaneling isn't magic. There are some trade-offs. The first one is clipping. On ideal sunny days, some energy is thrown away at the top. It's not dangerous, but it's unused power. The second is cost and space. More panels cost money and need roof space. On RVs and boats, in my opinion, overpaneling isn't worth it. Third one is parallel wiring complexity. If you overpanel a low voltage MPPT, you're more likely to wire panels in parallel. More parallel strings means combiners, fuses and thicker cables that can negate the savings of using a smaller MPPT. Cheap hardware risks. Good MPPTs and inverters can handle overpaneling. Cheap controllers may overheat or fail if pushed too hard for too long. Electronics will run hotter, which can shorten their lifespan. And the last one is grid tie regulations. Local regulations can limit the solar panel to inverter ratio. For example, a maximum of 120% overpaneling on your string inverter. That depends on your local laws. So to quickly recap, overpaneling means more solar panels on your charge controller. 
but still within the maximum input voltage and maximum input current of the device. It's mainly used to get more energy in winter and on cloudy days with the same MPPT. To save money by using a smaller MPPT or string inverter. Or to stay under legal or tax limits on inverter size. Let me know in the comments. Did you overpanel your system? Or would you do it again? Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.